Hello. Hello, teacher. Hi, Estela. How are you today? I'm fine. Yeah. Okay, so you're listening to the president's speech. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, but uh, in this moment, uh, ya no. <laughs> no more. Yo no tuve, como antes de esta tengo otra clase, no sé qué ha dicho. Lo mismo de siempre, regañando. Regañada. No me perdí de nada. No, ahí vea mejor el resumen. That's okay. All right. Uh, well, and the rest of you, Nelly, how are you today? Hi, teacher. How are you? Are you okay? Fine, good, so, so? Yes. All right, what about you, Roxana? How are you today? How are you today, Roxana? Fine, not so good, more or less, fantastic. How are you today? Okay, well, um, we're going to continue with yesterday's topic. I know that some of you are maybe listening to the present speech, um, but we need to continue with the yesterday's content. So if you were in classes yesterday, you remember that uh, we were studying about the uses of there is and there are. What does it mean? What do we use there is and there are for? Para que lo utilizamos? Volunteers, what do we use that is and that are for? As you know, this is part of the platform content. So we are going to watch the video so you can refresh the knowledge and then you can answer to my questions. Remember that if you uh, have any doubt or question about the exercise, you can ask. And uh, today I hope that you were, uh, well, we will finish the section number two. And remember that in section three, at the end of section three, you have the midterm exam. So it is important you complete the exercises and that you ask in case that you have any question. Any question you can ask, remember. So we're gonna watch the video, the explanation about the uses of there is and there are. Hi everyone. In this class, you'll learn how to form statements with there is and there are. Also, how to use some, no, and any when referring to different objects. Let's get started by listening to a conversation titled, There Aren't Any Chairs. This conversation illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. Let's listen and practice the conversation. This apartment is great. Thanks. I love it. But I really need some furniture. What do you need? Oh, I need lots of things. There are some chairs in the kitchen, but there isn't a table. 
And there's no sofa here in the living room. And there aren't any chairs. There's only this lamp. So let's go shopping next weekend. Now, let's learn how to use there is and there are. I would like to start by demonstrating the examples on this chart. There's a bed in the bedroom. There's no sofa in the bedroom. There isn't a table in the kitchen. There are some chairs in the kitchen. There are no chairs in the living room. There aren't any chairs in the living room. There's equals there is. To better understand how to form this statement, I would like to write some formulas. For singular objects, there plus is or isn't plus a, that's the article a, or no, plus complement. For plural objects, there plus are or aren't plus some or any or no plus some kind of complement. So let's take a look at the first example on the left hand side of this chart. There's a bed in the bedroom. This is a singular object so we're going to follow the formula there plus is or isn't plus a or no plus some kind of complement. So in this case we use there then the verb to be is is um, on the example is contracted as you can see there's we will use the article a the complement is bed in the bedroom we're going to do something similar with the next example there's no sofa in the bedroom at the beginning of our sentence we have there the verb to be is is once again on the example is contracted then we'll use the article a because we're talking about a singular object finally we have the complement sofa in the bedroom the last example there isn't a table in the kitchen at the beginning of our sentence we use there the verb to be is isn't because we're expressing something negative then we use the article a because we're talking about a singular object finally we have the complement table in the kitchen now let's look at the right hand side of this chart for these examples we're going to talk about plural objects so we need that formula there plus are or aren't plus some or any or no plus some kind of complements now let's uh, look at the first example on the right hand side of the chart there are some chairs in the kitchen at the beginning of our sentence we use there after that the verb to be are next we use some it's important to mention that we will use some whenever we're making positive statements we can't say any for example finally we have the complement chairs in the kitchen our next example there are no chairs in the living room at the beginning of our sentence we use there after that the verb to be are next we're going to use no notice that we will use this expression whenever we're expressing something negative and you can also say aren't any as well either one is correct uh, finally we have the complement chairs in the living room for our uh, last example there aren't any chairs in the living room we start our sentence with there next the verb to be aren't after that we're going to use any it's important to remind you that we will use any whenever we are making negative statements we can't say some for example 
Finally, we have the complement, chairs in the living room. Now it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to describe the objects that you have and don't have in your house or apartment. After you finish this task, please share your work in our discussion forums. All right, that was the video about the uses of there is and there are. Can you explain me, a volunteer, what did you understand from the video? A volunteer, what did you understand from the video? Okay, me yes. um, that I understood is that we were we will use uh, there is there are for uh, plural plural things and that we we have there there are for for positive and there aren't for negative form uh -huh. uh, and we have there are plus uh, the verb plus a complement. Mm -hmm. uh, just that. Okay, very nice, very nice. Okay, we could to use there is for singular. Okay, and there are for plural. And this is what we have here in this chart. It explains you that there is is for singular object, okay? As we said yesterday, um, we're gonna use it in affirmative singular, there is. But if it's negative, we use there isn't, okay? There isn't. For plural, in affirmative statement, we use there are. And for negative, as we see here, there aren't, okay? But if it's question, we use is there, okay? Basically, uh, también se les explica que um, vamos a usar some en oraciones afirmativas, solo en afirmativas. Any lo vamos a usar en negativas. Okay? Eso es lo que se les explica y lo que van a poner en práctica en la plataforma. Uh -huh. Ahora, si es pregunta, solo se invierte el orden. Sabemos que para hablar de la existencia de algo en singular decimos there is. Pero si es pregunta, is there. Si yo quiero preguntar si hay algo y es singular, voy a decir is there. Por ejemplo, aquí tengo, is there a pen on the table? Y vamos a usar siempre there is o there isn't en la respuesta. Si es afirmativa, vamos a decir yes, there is. Si es negativa, será no, there isn't. Ahora, si quiero preguntar por la existencia de algo en plural, voy a decir are there. Are there two pens on the table? Yes, there are o oh, no, there aren't. Okay. ¿Alguna pregunta hasta aquí o va quedando claro el tema? No questions. No questions. Okay. Well, I'm going to send you this. Les voy a mandar al WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Thank you. And, and esto para mientras solo el picture aquí. The there is it. There are. Para que vayan solventando los siguientes ejercicios en su cuaderno. Aquí vamos a poner en práctica lo que acabamos de ver en la plataforma y lo que les acabo de explicar. Okay. There is a library next to the park. And then we have all the students went home. Okay. There aren't students in the classroom. There aren't any. Acuérdense que el any es en oraciones negativas. It's some, it can be in positive statements. ¿Cómo completaríamos la número tres? 50 states in the United States. 
there are. There is. Are, are, perdón. Ok, there are, porque está en plural 50 estados. Ok, there are 50, there are 50 states in the United States. So, en, la, en su cuaderno solo escriban la respuesta. Number three, there are. There are 50 states in the United States. Y luego vamos a revisar cómo nos fue con este ejercicio. Si ya lo entendimos al 100% o si necesitamos reforzarlo. Les voy a dar un tiempo para que completen las oraciones y ahí voy a ir bajando para que vayan viendo las que siguen. Have you finished the exercises? Have you finished? No. No? Okay, I'll no. give you more time.
I'm finished. Okay, we're going to check the answers. Has everybody finished? Yes, finished. Okay, we're going to check the answers. As you can see here, there you go with the answers. In number one, it is there is. Number two, there aren't any. Number three, there are. Number four, there aren't any. Five, is there? There isn't. Six, are there? Seven, there is. Eight, are there? Nine, there are. Ten, is there? Eleven, is there? Twelve, there aren't any. Thirteen, are there? Fourteen, there is. And fifteen, there are. How many good answers did you have? Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, that's excellent. If you have fourteen good answer, it means that you get nine point three. That's excellent. If you get thirteen answers, is eight point seven. Twelve good answers is eight. Eleven good answer is seven point three. Ten good answer is six point seven. Como les fue? Good. Good. No questions? Is the topic clear? Okay. Well, we're going to continue then um, with the next exercise. This part of the same topic. So, as you say, just to continue with this, in the platform content, you see that. We practiced this conversation yesterday, and today we will continue with this exercise, which is similar to what you saw in the platform. So let's take a look and listen for pronunciation. Page 47, exercise seven, grammar focus. There is, there are, there's a bed in the bedroom. There's no sofa in the bedroom. There isn't a table in the kitchen. There are some chairs in the kitchen. There are no chairs in the living room. There aren't any chairs in the living room. There's equals there is. Okay, about the grammar remembering. Uh, what I explained yesterday, so we use this article only in singular, okay? A or an, lo que les explicaba ayer, a and an only for singular. Uh, if it is negative, si están haciendo una oración negativa, van a poner no, o there is no, or there isn't any, right? So it's okay both ways. There aren't any, that's okay. Y some solo para afirmative, okay? There are some chairs in the kitchen. Y any solo en negative, okay? With this, we can practice uh, by doing this exercise. So in this, you have to look at the pictures and answer, okay? We have a picture here and we have to answer according to the picture. For example, if you see, if you look at the picture in number one, it says dresser in the bedroom. Que era dresser? Do you remember que era dresser? Ayer vimos ese vocabulario de los muebles. Que era dresser? A volunteer to answer. Como el gavetero. 
Exacto, excelente, gavetero. Entonces aquí en el bedroom no vemos un dresser. So the, um, the answer would be there is no dresser in the bedroom. Chairs in the kitchen. Number two, chairs in the kitchen. What is the answer, a volunteer? There are. There are? There are. There are chairs in the kitchen. There are some chairs in the kitchen. Uh -huh. Hay algunas. Some. There are some chairs in the kitchen. Number three, TV in the living room. There is a TV is. in the living room. There's a TV in the living room, excellent. Number four, refrigerator. Number four, refrigerator. There no. Okay, there isn't. Ajá, uh -huh. pueden decir there isn't a refrigerator, como lo están viendo acá, o there is no refrigerator. Uh -huh. Because it's singular, como es singular vamos a usar is. Yes. There is, y como es negativo, no. There is not or there isn't. A refrigerator. O podemos decir de la forma que está acá también, there is no refrigerator. Ok, gotta move this. Number five, rugs on the floor. Do you remember rugs? ¿Qué era rugs? Tapete. Tapete o alfombras, ajá. Y dice rugs on the floor. There no, are there, not. There, there, are, there aren't. Ajá, uh -huh. there aren't. No. Y podemos no, decir no. any o no. De cualquier forma, no. any o no. no. Aquí tienen las dos posibles. There aren't any rows on the floor o there are no rows on the floor. Excellent. Now, number six, curtains. Curtains on the windows. Curtains. There aren't. There aren't. Okay. There aren't any. There aren't any curtains on the window. Or oh, there are no curtains on the window. Excellent. Next number seven. Mirror. Can a mirror? Do you remember mirror? Uh -huh. Mirror in the bedroom. There is. There is. Excellent. There is a mirror in the bedroom. And finally, number eight. Books in the bookcase. There aren't any books in the bookcase. There aren't any books in the bookcase. Excellent. There aren't any books in the bookcase or there are no books in the bookcase. Very good. You did a very good job. Well, the next exercise is the reading. And with the reading exercise, you will finish the section number two of the platform. And what's in the reading? With this reading, you just have to complete it and complete the exercise as well. The reading, uh, it's about two special houses. You listen to the reading and then you have to answer some questions about the reading.
Hi everyone. In this class, you'll develop skills in scanning and reading for details. Reading. Two special houses in the American Southwest. In San Antonio, Texas, there is a purple house. This house is the home of Sandra Cisneros. Ms. Cisneros is a Mexican-American writer. She is famous for her interesting stories. The house has a porch with a pink floor. The rooms are green, pink, and purple. There are many books and colorful paintings. Many other houses near Ms. Cisneros's house are white or beige, so her house is very different. Some of her neighbors think her house is too colorful. But Ms. Cisneros loves it. Every year, many people visit Arizona to learn about Native American tribes. Most people stay in hotels, but some people stay in traditional Native American homes called hogans. Lorraine Nelson, a teacher from Arizona, invites visitors to stay in her hogan. It has three chairs, two beds on the floor. And a wood-burning stove. Ms. Nelson teaches her guests about Native American traditions. All right, that is at the end of the section number two. Paintings. I would like to know if you have um, completed the exercise there. No sé si ya llegaron hasta ahí en la plataforma completando los ejercicios. No yet. No yet. Ok, en this reading, este es el final de la sección 2, that's reading. No sé si encontraron alguna palabra nueva o okay, que no comprendan el significado. Creo que no. Ok, for example, the word porch. Acá, um, it has a porch. What is porch? It has a porch with a pink floor. This is the porch. Este es el porch. Es un portico. Esto que es como una terracita en el frente de la casa. Es un portico. In English, it's porch. Okay. Okay. And there is another interesting word. This is Hogan. Uh, Hogan is this type of house. Es esta casita tradicional de los americanos nativos. Son como casitas de barro. Esos son Hogan. Cuando lleguen a esta reading, lo único que tienen que hacer es completar. Es como un Many other de, houses de near Mrs. Cisneros. Okay. Cuando terminan la lectura, tienen que completar unos ejercicios que están a continuación. Lo finalizan acá. Y tienen que copiar exactamente como, como está ahí para que no les vaya a dar problemas. Or what? Hi, everyone. In this que no han llegado hasta ahí, lo vamos a ver acá. Class, you'll develop ah, skills in scanning and reading. Mm -hmm. Ok, ahí tienen que ir seleccionando. Esto es lo que van a hacer con esa lectura. Tienen que seleccionar los artículos correctos de cada casa, ya que leímos uh, de, acerca de estas dos casas. Van a completar acá utilizando lo que está acá. Three chairs, many books, colorful paintings, porch with a print floor, two beds in the floor. 
and a wood burning stove. Ahí van a, por ejemplo, uh, Sandra Cisneros House. Es esta, la primera es la casa de Sandra Cisnero. There is a, there is a, y aquí busco, there is a three chairs, no puede ser la respuesta. Many books, colorful paintings, no, porque están en plural y no es lo que le recuerdo que leí. Porch with a pink floor, two beds in the floor, or wood burning stove. Ok, según veo, lo que corresponde aquí a Sandra Cisneros House es There is a porch with a pink floor. Entonces ahí usted tiene que escribir There is a porch with a pink floor. Y luego va a ir colocando las demás. Usted las tiene que digitar de acuerdo a lo que hay en cada casa. Eso tienen que completarlo. Y ahí finaliza la sección 2. Hola. Ok. Questions? Tienen preguntas aquí? No, teacher. No questions. No questions. Ok, cuando lleguen a la sección 2, ese es el último ejercicio y luego entramos a la sección 3. Al finalizar la sección 3, hay un examen que se llama Midterm Exam. Ahí cuando usted le va dando siguiente, 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 siguiente. Va a llegar a la sección del midterm exam. Tiene que completar todos los ejercicios y ese examen que es el de uh, medio curso, el midterm exam. Ese también lo puede repetir si se equivocó en una respuesta. Si de repente dijo, ay, aquí me equivoqué porque no era I, sino que era R. Usted lo puede corregir. Y la nota que va guardando es la última. Si usted en el primer intento se sacó 8, Ok, la, uh, la plataforma guarda la nota de 8, pero si usted lo vuelve a hacer y se saca 9, la plataforma va guardando el 9, el 10, la última nota, esa es la que queda guardada. Lo puede repetir las veces que sea necesario. La idea es que usted haya comprendido el tema y uh, por lo mismo, si hay algún tema que ustedes sienten que se les está dificultando, estamos a buen tiempo como para hacer un repaso. Si hay algún tema que ustedes sienten difícil de lo que hemos visto en la sección 1 y en la sección 2, me lo pueden hacer saber para hacer una clase de repaso. No sé si tienen algo en mente ahorita. Una, una consulta. Sí. Este, en mi caso, yo ya hice la primera actividad de ese de la sección 2, ¿verdad? Pero solamente me tira correcta las primeras tres respuestas al ponerlas de abajo. No sé si es que tienen que ir también con los guiones. Eh, no era un ejercicio de preguntas. No les... Permítame si no... Hola, ¿ahora sí me escucha? No escucho. Hola. ¿Los demás sí me escuchan, hola? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, ok, eso no, no es mi, mi dispositivo. ¿Ahora? ¿Me escucha ahora? Sí, le comentaba de que yo hice la, las primeras tres y me salieron correctas, pero las de abajo... No. Es, se no, sé, no sé si es que tiene que llevar los guiones, así como están en... Es el ejercicio que les acabo de mostrar, ¿o no? No. Es correcto, sí, ese mismo es. Ah, sí, eh, ahorita lo puedo ver porque a mí también me, me, <ríe> me dio dificultad ese ejercicio porque yo sí, tiendo a resolverlo por, por lo mismo, ¿verdad? Que a veces este... Hay dudas. Entonces, ahorita le muestro cómo está aprovechando que está aquí el, el, las tres últimas, me dijo. Sí, las tres últimas. Ah. Ajá. No, no, esta, esta sí. Wood Burning Stop tiene que llevar el guión. Ah, okay. Yo lo hice con mayúscula, le puse punto, se lo quité y vi que tiene que llevar el guión. Uh -huh. También mayúscula. 
Uh -huh. Póngale el guión y igual si siente ahí es eh, wood burning stove con el, con el guioncito. Uh -huh. Ok, gracias. Uh -huh. Ok, any other question? Solo este ejercicio les ha dado problemas. Si no han llegado hasta ahí, tienen que completarlo porque ya vamos para la sección 3. Okay, for the section three, I have some vocabulary about jobs. Uh, what jobs in English do you know? What vocabulary, uh, let, let me check your previous vocabulary. What do you know about professions in English? The most common, doctor. Another that comes to your mind? Police. A police, uh -huh. police. Engineer. Engineer, uh -huh. Teacher. Teacher, okay. Another. Only that? Psychology. Psychologist, yes, psychologist. Mm -hmm. Mechanic. Mechanic. Okay. Okay, I see you have some vocabulary. We have some others here that we can practice. We can practice with this uh, so we can get more vocabulary. Uh, what is this profession or occupation? Actor. Act. Yes, it's an actor. And this one? Actress. Act. Actress. Yes, perfect. And what about this one? What is this Arch one? Architect. 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 Yes, architect. Let's continue. What about this one? Any idea? How do you call that in English? Some people get confused. A veces se confunden con español y dicen painter, pero painter son los pintores de, de muros, de casas, and etc. Pero si es un pintor art, artist. artist, si es dibujante, pintor de, de eh, obra de arte, es artist, artist. This one is easy. Can you guess this one? An astronaut. Astronaut. Yes, astronaut. Astronaut. And this one? Uh, I don't know, but solo se me ocurría runner. <laughs> no sé a si runner, uh -huh. si sí, es un corredor específicamente que solo corre, es runner, that's okay. And in general, is athlete. Uh -huh. Un atleta, athlete. Athlete. Very good. Um, and this one? Chef. Chef. Mm. Look at what's on ends here. It's panadero. Do you have any idea of how to say panadero in English? Panadero. It's baker. 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 Baker and this one. Barber. Bob. Barber. Uh huh. Barber. Very good. Good job.
brick layer. Brick layer. This one is a brick layer. Layer. Businessman. A businessman. Ajá, es un hombre de negocios. A businessman. And this is the carnicero. But how do you say carnicero in English? Butcher. 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 That's carnicero in English. Butcher. This one? Carpenter. 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 Uh huh. And here, engineer informatic. Computer program. Okay, a computer programmer. Es un programador de computadoras. Computer programmer. Cook. This is a chef, or you can call it cook, and that's okay. Pueden decir chef, o pueden decir cook. That's okay, de cualquier forma. Dancer. She's a dancer. dancer. Yeah, she's a dancer. This one is easy. He's a dentist. Dentist. Uh -huh. He is a dentist. Very good. She is a doctor. 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 She is or a doctor. And he is plumber. Mm, no. Mm. Look at the cables. Electric. 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 Electrician. Electric. Uh -huh. He is an electrician. Factory work. He is a worker. factory worker. Yeah, un trabajador de fábrica, a factory worker. Farm. A farmer, uh -huh. es un granjero. He is a farmer. He is, what is his profession? Firefight. He is a firefighter. Firefighter. And he? He yeah. is a gardener. He's a gardener. He is a hairdresser. Hairdresser. Un estilista de cabello. A hairdresser. Okay, what does she do? ¿Qué hace ella? What is her occupation? How do you say ama de casa in English? No idea? No. <laughs> Housewife. 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 Uh -huh. That's it. Housewife. This is ama de casa. Housewife. This is judge. a judge. El juez. Judge. Lawyer. He's a lawyer. He is a lawyer. She is a maid. maid, la empleada doméstica, maid. Me He's a mechanic, aha, uh -huh. good. He Artist. is a musician. Musician, musician. She is a nurse. 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 Yeah, good. Uh, he is office. A, an office worker. He's an office worker. And he is a painter. Paint. Painter. What's his profession? Pilot. Yes. Pilot. 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 
And this is a plumber. 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 Uh -huh. plumber. She is a police officer. Police, police officer. Postman. She is a postman. Sailor. He's a sailor. Scientist. A scientist. Uh huh. He is a scientist. Secretary. She is a secretary. Shop assistant. Shop assistant. Singer. A singer. Soldier. A soldier. He is a soldier. Street trip. Street sweeper. Es lo que es un barrendero. Street sweeper. Taxi driver. Taxi driver. Teacher. He is a teacher. Vet. She is a vet or veterinarian. Because here is the difference. If it is a man, you say waiter. Waiter. And if it is a lady, is waitress. Waitress is different. Man, waiter, uh, girl, or lady is waitress. This welder. Is welder. Welder. Writer. And writer. And that's it. That's some vocabulary about professions and occupations. Eh, si no tomaron nota, uh, don't worry. Se las voy a mandar en, en el grupo de WhatsApp. And that's part of the content that we will study in the platform in the section three. We will start with some professions and occupations, probably the most common. They are here. And we can play this audio to listen to the pronunciation of the most uh, common jobs. Maybe you find new vocabulary here. Unit 8. What do you do? Page 50, exercise 1. Let's Word power. Repeat. Jobs. Part A. Match the jobs with the pictures. Then listen and practice. One. K. Police officer. Police officer. Two. O. Taxi driver. Taxi driver. Three. P. Vendor. Vendor. Four. G. Ok, lo vamos a repetir así como lo vemos aquí porque estarlo buscando por letra está difícil. Let's repeat. Accountant. Bellhop. Cashier. Cashier. Doctor. Doctor. Electrician. Electrician. Front desk clerk. Front desk clerk. Nurse. Nurse. Office manager. Office manager. Painter. Painter. Plumber. Plumber. Police officer. Police officer. Receptionist. Receptionist. Salesperson. Salesperson. Security guard. Security guard. Taxi driver. Taxi driver. Vendor. Vendor. And then if there is a new vocabulary of a new word that is not very clear for you, Alguno nuevo o que no esté muy claro el significado? Uh, yes, I have a question. What is the difference between police officer and security ward? A police, uh, police officer 
usually works in the street. And a security guard can work in a department store in a shopping mall, for example. Um, okay, uh -huh. thank you. That base, that's basically, un police officer es como un servidor público, un, un policía que anda en las calles, ¿verdad? Y un guardia de seguridad sí ya es como privado para que cuide una tienda, un centro comercial, algún banco. That's a security guard. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank another you. question? That's okay. And this is the same with vendor and salesperson. A vendor is like informal. Vendor, se le puede decir a alguien que vende en la calle, un vendedor informal. Ya si vamos a un um, almacén, salesperson. And then we have some other vocabulary here that can be like not very common. For example, bellhop. Bellhop uh, is this one. Bellhop is the number 11. This is a bellhop. Es una persona que le ayuda con el equipaje a transportarse en el elevador, uh, en los hoteles. Bellhop sería lo que conocemos en español como el botones de un hotel, el botón es el que le ayuda con las maletas, con el ascensor, es bellhop. Do you have any question about this vocabulary? ¿Tienen alguna pregunta acerca de este vocabulario de las profesiones? No questions? Yeah, what is bellhop and front desk clerk? Ok, bellhop, eh, bellhop es este que les estaba diciendo acá, el botones. Este es bellhop. Bellhop es el que le ayuda con las maletas a un hotel, que, la, que es el que sale a ayudarle con las maletas a las personas. También eh, él se encarga de operar el ascensor, el elevador, ese es bellhop, botones. Y front desk clerk es similar a un recepcionista. Front desk clerk es la persona como de atención al cliente. Front desk clerk. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other question? All right, that's vocabulary of section three. Con este vocabulario es el que vamos a estar trabajando en la sección tres. Recuerden hacer sus ejercicios. Eh, cualquier cosa, duda o que no les esté saliendo bien un ejercicio, pueden escribir al WhatsApp, pueden reportar algún problema y con gusto les vamos a ayudar. Es importante que vayan completando los ejercicios y recuerden ya estamos ya viendo sección 3. Lo tienen que tener completos los ejercicios de la sección 1 y 2, ¿ya? Okay? para que no se les vayan acumulando. So thank you for joining today's class and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. See you. See Have you. a good night. Bye.